My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, and once again I invite you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the Gospel Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me, who runs ahead of me, because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be known, made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord my dear brothers and sisters, as I said, we are in the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. And our Gospel this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. John. We are in chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. And of course, as you have heard, this is the event when John the Baptist, seeing Jesus come toward him, points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Now, we can understand better and appreciate better the story if we know the whole context of the story. Well, of course, first of all, we know that the Jews have been waiting for the Messiah. In fact, until now, they are still waiting for the Messiah. And John the Baptist was the one sent by the Father, sent by God, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. And how did John the Baptist prepare that? And we have seen that a lot of times during the Advent season. John the Baptist said, repent from your sins. And after repenting from their sins, what do they do? They go to the Jordan River and John said, and I will baptize you with water. And with that message of John the Baptist, a lot of the Jews went to the Jordan River. And so you can see the power of John the Baptist. You can see the influence of John the Baptist. Some, or rather, few Bible scholars would even say that John the Baptist seems to be a more powerful preacher compared to Jesus Christ because people follow him. People are even scared of him. Remember that it was Herod, a very powerful man during that time, was even in a way scared of giving the order of beheading John the Baptist. He was just in a way forced to do it. And so we saw the power of John the Baptist, we saw the great things that he was doing, we hear how influential he was to the people, that many Jews during that time even thought that he was already the Messiah they have been waiting for. And how do we see that in the Gospels? Well, just before this particular story, that was the event when the Jews sent priests and Levites to John the Baptist. They sent the priests and Levites to John the Baptist to inquire something from him. And what was that? They ask, are you already the Messiah we have been waiting for? Now, my dear friends, that gives you a clear idea that tru truly the Jews during that time already thought John the Baptist was already the Messiah. Because by sending the priests and Levites to John the Baptist to ask him if he's already the Messiah they've been waiting for gives you an idea that they already consider him to be, okay? He might already be the Messiah. And yet, what was the answer of John the Baptist? He said, no, I am not the Messiah. And when he said no, they asked further, are you Elijah? And John the Baptist said, no, I'm not Elijah. Are you the prophet? No, I'm not the prophet. Why would they ask John the Baptist those three questions? If they ask, are you the Messiah? And John the Baptist said, no. Okay. If you're not the Messiah, are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet? Why? Because the belief of the Jews is that when the Messiah comes, before he comes, Elijah first will come back. Elijah will be the one to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Or if not Elijah, one of the great prophets. And so they were thinking if John the Baptist is not yet the Messiah, maybe he's already Elijah. Maybe he's already the prophet. And it happened that in that event, Pharisees were also present. And so the Pharisees 
ask John the Baptist, So, if you're not the Messiah, you are not Elijah, you are not the prophet, why are you baptizing? And what was the answer of John the Baptist? He said, well, I baptize you with water, but some, somebody's following, coming after me who is mightier than I, he will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. And the following day, which is our gospel that we just read today, John, John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34, the following day, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, John the Baptist dramatically points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God. How beautiful, how dramatic it is. It's a very good sight to behold. Why? Because I always ask people, can you imagine during the time of John the Baptist, because people considered him to be very powerful, to be very influential, for them to even ask if you're already the Messiah? Can you imagine if John the Baptist at that point said, yes, I am the Messiah? Can you imagine how different things could have been, how the events would have t taken place? So the way, we, But the beauty of the person of John the Baptist is this that he truly knows that he is not the Messiah, that he truly knows that, knows that his role is only to prepare for the Messiah, that even though people already considered him to be very powerful, to be influential, he truly knows it is the Lord who is the Messiah. It is Jesus who is the Messiah. That's why when he sees Jesus come toward him, behold the Lamb of God, that some of his disciples, by the way, a few Bible scholars would also tell us that it seems like John the Baptist even had more followers than Jesus. Imagine how many people went to the Jordan River. Okay, that, that there's particular, like when he says, Behold the Lamb of God. If you continue the story, you will find out that some of the disciples of, the, of John the Baptist left him and started following the Lord. And one of them is Andrew. Who is Andrew? Remember? Andrew is the brother of Simon Peter, the beauty also of the person of Andrew. Andrew was the first one to, to discover the Lord compared to his life. When he has discovered the Lord, the Messiah, he went out to look for his brother Simon and brought Simon to Jesus. And then later on, what happens? Simon Peter even becomes the leader of the group. Can you imagine the feeling of Andrew? It's like saying, hey, I only introduced you to him and now you're the leader. But again, the beauty of the persons of these two, of John the Baptist and Andrew. And what is that? That they always, their lives, the things that they do, always point to the Lord. My dear friends, it's a great challenge for all of us as disciples of the Lord. That our life, the things that we do, the great things that we're able to do, do they always point to the Lord? I hope when people see us, when they look at us, they truly discover the Lord in their life. May we be signs of pointing to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving Father, we continue to praise, worship, and thank you for all the blessings you have given us. The gospel today, which gives us the person of John the Baptist, is a great challenge for all, all of us. Reminding us that as your disciples, as your followers, as believers, we must always be pointing to you that the things that we do, words that we say, our person in itself will be signs pointing to you. That through us, we can bring our brothers and sisters closer to you. Loving Father, give us that inspiration. Guide us. Give us the strength to be always to fulfill our duty, our obligation, as your true and authentic disciples. May everything we do always be according to your will and pleasing to you. We lift up to you all our brothers and sisters who have gone away from you for the longest time. We pray, Lord, even our loved ones, especially our loved ones, may in the, the point of their life, May they receive the inspiration and the faith to believe that you are indeed our Lord, our Savior. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless you.